Good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you are able to join us this morning. It is so nice to see so many uh, smiling eyes. And my name is Gabby. And my name's Steve. We are so excited that you're here. And if you would, we'd love for you to fill out the connection card that is available to you. We'd love to get to know who you are and if any information has changed uh, for you recently. We'd love uh, to be able to have that so we can communicate with you some of the uh, things that are happening in the life of the church. Absolutely. And yesterday, we actually had an awesome opportunity to connect with some of our global partners via Zoom. And I want to invite you and let you know that um, on August 16th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m., again via Zoom, we're going to have that same opportunity to hear from some of our global partners uh, to check in and see how they're doing. So we really invite you to come and join us that way. You can find the Zoom link in your email or free to, feel free to reach out if you're having a hard time finding that link. Yeah, and on August 29th, we want to let you know that in Warwick, uh, it is we are calling that day the Day of Hope. There will be a bunch of activities that are being done to uh, serve that community. And if you are interested in being a part of that in any way, uh, whether it's donating items or serving uh, on that day, we'd love for you to contact the office uh, sometime this week and let us know. Absolutely. And I don't know about all of you guys, but these past few months have definitely made me think uh, a lot, uh, as I've had plenty of time to do so. And one of those ways was thinking about my perspective, specifically towards worship, as it started to look really different everywhere and everything from worshiping with my dog uh, at home uh, to being able to gather in tiny, tiny groups with my parents, finally, um, and so on and so forth. But in particular, um, I've learned that worship can look a lot of different ways. Um, and I can worship with my dogs on some Sundays. And another way that I've learned um, what worship can look like is worship is just an act of giving as well. And so thinking about it in that perspective um, has really shifted uh, my mindset a lot. So I just want to say thank you for the way that you guys continue to give. Um, and I'm gonna ask our ushers to bring forward those tithes and offering boxes. And as they're coming forward, I wanna remind you that our global partner of the week this week is the country of Yemen. You can go ahead and read about them in your bulletin. There are plenty of ways to be praying for them. So I'm going to ask that you bow your head and join me in prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you so, so much for the opportunity we have to be here uh, and praying for the country of Yemen. Lord God, we pray that you would just watch their COVID numbers, watch over these children, watch over these families uh, and all that are affected in that area, not just by COVID, but just the day-to-day -day life that they live through. Lord God, we ask that you would just continue to lift them up and be by their side. In all your name, amen. Amen. Hey, and as we continue to worship, and Gabby mentioned that there's lots of different ways that we've been worshiping over the last several months, we'd encourage you uh, to wear your masks while we uh, continue to worship together today. Please feel free to stand with us as we worship. Whether you're watching from home or joining us here this morning, we're so glad to have you. Keeper, light 
light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are Pastor Rick is going to share with us from the story of Abraham and his son Isaac. And if you're familiar with that story, you know that God called Abraham to do something crazy, something unthinkable. And it wasn't even the first time that he had called Abraham to do something that seemed crazy. But in this situation, I can't imagine how Abraham felt. And what kept coming to my mind when I thought about in my own life when God calls me to do something that I may not understand or something that I, I just can't imagine how it's gonna turn out, I think just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I think of Isaiah 55 that says, my thoughts are nothing like yours, says the Lord, and my ways are high above your ways. I think of Romans 8:28 that says, God is working all things for the good of those who love him. 
And as we sing this next song, um, the song's called Breakthrough. And maybe you're in a position where you just need to keep putting one foot in front of the other. You need to commit to listening to God, just like Abraham did, and just trust Him. And trust that your breakthrough will come. It may not be exactly what you want, but it's gonna be exactly what you need because we serve a faithful God, amen, who keeps his promises. So let's sing this with everything we have this morning.
Will you pray with me this morning that we really will experience breakthrough in our life? So, Father, that has been our prayer this week, that you would work like that. You knew exactly who was going to show up in this room, and God, you knew who was going to sign on online. And, Father, there are people who need breakthrough. And we're praying today that that is exactly what they will experience. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus who had the power to come back from death to life. And that's why we know it's possible to have breakthrough. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat here in the room. And if you're online and in the room, we want to say thank you guys so much for joining us. We really are glad that you're here. And that connection card that they talked about earlier is so important um, that you, uh, that for us to be able to get connected to you. And it's your email address. If you're going to stay up to date with all the information, all the changes that's happening around here, we really do need your email address. So will you use the connection card and make sure your email address that we have that and online you'll find that link for the connection card and you can just uh, send that into us so that we can make sure that you're getting the information so that we're all on the same page if you don't know my name is Rick I get to be the lead pastor here and we really are grateful uh, for each and every one of you we're going to continue this teaching series called getting away all summer long we've been using this analogy this analogy about vacation about getting away the idea is getting away to get closer. And that's what happens so many times on vacation. And think about this. Think about the commitment that you make when you commit to getting away. First of all, you commit to a a time frame, don't you? You get your calendar out and you say, hey, on this date, from this period of time, we're getting away. That takes a commitment on your part. When you make that commitment, you're committing. Maybe you're committing uh, to your spouse. Maybe you're committing to your kids. Maybe you're committing to a group of friends because you're going to go with your group of friends and you're going to go somewhere, but you're making a commitment to them. When you do that, you're also making a commitment. Um, a a financial commitment. You're making a financial commitment to those who are going with you because think about this because you're counting on them to chip in to help pay for whatever it is you're getting away for, right? And you are are setting up just a little bit aside. Every pay period, you put a little bit away so that you can do those things and not go in debt, right? That's how we're supposed to take vacations. And and so it takes a commitment, but there's something else I wonder. I wonder if you think about this. Do you do you commit to having a good time no matter what happens with your vacation plans? Do you sometimes we forget that because how many times have you been uh, you went to get away? And it didn't go as you had planned. And for some of you, you know, who like to have everything, you know, controlled, right? And you show up and and the hotel tells you, oh, we don't have your reservation. And we're full, you know? And it's like, wah! You know, and that just set you right off, right? Um, And this just happened uh, to us, you know, last week. I told you how uh, we got away. And um, we, Zoe and I were actually in Nashville, well, outside Nashville, um, in Murfreesboro. That's where my sister lives. And so we were there about a week before the rest of my family family started showing up because um, they, we were going to the Smoky Mountains and everybody was going to go to the Smoky Mountains with us. And so the, the day before we were to leave, um, my daughter Ashley and her husband Ryan uh, flew in. They rented a car and they uh, drove down to my sister's house. And so, we, you know, we all go out, we greet them. They're in front, of our, in front of their house and he rented a Mustang because he likes sports cars, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go check out your Mustang. So I'm walking around his Mustang and I'm thinking, oh, this is a sweet and um, I'm just about done, but I look at the front tire, the front passenger's tire, and on the sidewall is this like ginormous gash in his tire, and it was so deep that you could see the steel belts uh, right through that gash, and I'm like, dude, this is not safe. The Smoky Mountains is four hours away from my sister's house, and I'm like, you're not driving my daughter into the Smoky Mountains with that front tire, right? And so um, he calls the car rental company, and he tells them the deal, and they say, oh, well, bring it on back. I said, well, you tell them that they need to send you an email saying that they'll take full responsibility if that sidewall blows out on your way back because it's a 45-minute ride back into uh, the airport. And, of course, they said, well, we're not going to do that. We'll send a flatbed tow truck down. And so they did. Now, it's evening now. Now, they still have to get this rental car, and they told them to come back to the airport. And they go back to the airport. And when uh, my son-in-law gets to the counter... um, He says, you know, he explains who he is and the situation. And they say, we have no record that we have your car. 
And he's like, what? You came and you picked it up. You, you've towed my car. And so after lots of frustration there, he just finally walks away. He tries to find my sister who brought them to the airport. He can't find my sister out at the airport. My sister's trying to find him. And my sister is in this parking lot. She goes to put it in reverse. And she slams right into a Jersey barrier. Loses half of her bumper off her Maxima. And now she knows her husband is going to be fit to be tied. But she gets out, picks up her bumper, puts it in her trunk, and tries and finds finally connects. They call us on the way home. I'm like, hey, everything's going to be fine. Uh, Zoe and I, you know, we'll take you guys back to the airport in the morning. Before we actually leave, we'll get a car. On our way the next morning to the airport, he gets a phone call. He's like, um, your credit card has uh, been canceled because of fraudulent charges. We're like, no! Right? All of a sudden, in the car, I'm having to remind everybody we are committed to having a great time on this vacation. This is okay. Uh, this is nothing. Here's my card. You, we, you can pay me back later. Don't worry about it. And it just, we had to be committed that we were going to have a good time. And I called him to make sure I could ask permission to share this story because he wasn't having a good time. <laughs> and he said, yeah, because Rick, you know why? Because we did. We had a great time while we were away. It takes a commitment to do that. And here's what we're going to see right from the scriptures of this morning. In the scriptures, our bottom line, this idea of getting away is getting away to get closer calls for great commitment. We're going to see a great commitment in three specific areas. Number one, to hearing from God. If you're going to get away to get closer to God, it takes a commitment on your part to hearing from God. It's going to take on your part a commitment to taking action even when it doesn't make sense. When everything goes sideways, it, it, it's not going to make sense sometimes. But it's going to take a commitment on your part to do exactly what Emily said. Put one foot in front of the other and keep on going. And then all along the way, all through this, it's going to take a commitment on your part, trusting that God will provide. We're going to see all three of these principles right here in Genesis chapter 22. Take your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 22. Um, if you're online, you take your Bibles. We just don't want you watching church. Uh, we want you to be in church. You guys are the church. So take your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 22. While you're turning there, um, I just want to remind you about this story of Abraham and Isaac. If you grew up in church, you probably are familiar with this story. Uh, Abraham is going to be asked to do the unthinkable, all right? But remember who Abraham is. Remember in Genesis chapter 12 that God comes to him and says, if you'll just follow me, I will bless you. And from you will come many nations. And from those many nations, uh, not only will you have many nations, but um, all the peoples of the earth will be blessed from there. Well, um, that, so Abraham does that. He continues to follow God even when it doesn't make sense. And he follows him from one place literally to another place going where he doesn't know but just taking putting one foot in front of the other taking that step that God is called trusting that God is going to provide all along the way. Well, finally some years pass by. Now we find ourselves in Genesis 18 and, and uh, Abraham is thinking how am I going to be a father uh, to many nations when I don't even have a son with Sarah and I. We have no uh, children. Look at my age. I'm 99. And God came to him and said, no, I'm going to keep my promise. You can count it. I'm going to provide for you. And what we see in Genesis uh, chapter 21 is that God showed up. God stayed faithful to his promise to provide. And Sarah and Abraham have a son and an old age. And here now we find ourselves in Genesis chapter 22. Some time has passed. That's important. Look in verse number one. Some time later. That means an extended amount of time. And what some clues. We don't have Isaac's exact age, but we know that he's at least a, 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 um, a later teen, maybe in his 20s. We know he's not any older than 36, so he's younger than 36, but we know he's not a toddler. He's not a kid, and the scriptures gives us clues to that. But look what happened. The author here is telling us right away, please Please pick up on this. This is, this is not that God is about a sa sacrificing children. So don't walk away from this and think that that's not what this is about. This is about God testing Abraham's faith. That's what this is about. To see it was God, is Abraham fully committed to this. And notice what happens. Uh, God calls out and he says, Abraham. And Abraham replies, yes, 
Here I am. Don't you love that? I mean, that reply that like, here I am, this idea that I'm showing up. Yes, God, what is it? Uh, what, what I am submitted to you. What is it that you, do you want from me? Now, verse uh, two, take your son, your only son. In case you don't know who that is. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. See, the, the writer of this is trying to help us to feel the weight of what God is about ready to ask him to do. Here he has waited until he's 100 years old to even have a son. And then at some point later, when Isaac is, is late teens, early 20s, um, all of a sudden he's saying, take your son, your only son, whom you love so much. And in, I, in Abraham's mind, there's no doubt he's saying, whom you said that you were going to bless, whom you said that you were going to use and multiply, and we were going to become many nations and bless uh, all the peoples of the world. And he says, take him to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on a, one of the mountains, which I will show you. A commitment to hearing from God. That's what we see in these first verses. See, Abraham was already in the rhythm of hearing from God. He, was, he, he immediately responded with, yes, here I am. Just like he had done previously. Why? Because he practiced hearing from God. Do you do that? Do you practice hearing from God? You say, Rick, how, how, how is that going to happen? Is some loud, audible voice going to come down from heaven? Is there going to be writing in the sky? Probably not. You know how you're going to hear from God? You're going to hear from God when you open the Bible and you read it. That's our primary way of hearing from God. Are you in the natural rhythm of hearing from God by opening the scriptures and reading the Bible? You know how else we hear from God? We hear from God through other people. God uses other people in our lives. And we actually get to hear from them. Because there will be something that's on your mind. And someone will just come up to you. And they'll say something. And in your mind you're like, oh my gosh. They're just confirming what I heard from God. That happens. If you're in the rhythm. If you're in the practice of hearing from God. And listening and looking God, are you trying to speak to me there? Are you trying to speak to me from that person? So there are multiple ways that we hear from God. But are you in the practice of hearing from God? The story goes on. That the next morning, Abraham got up early. Now notice that. I mean, you think about his sleep. Think about what kind. He didn't get any sleep that night, right? Because he was tossing and turning. He's like, God, you want me to do what? Oh, my gosh. You know how hard this was? This was huge for him. But he got up. The next morning, he took action. He saddled his donkey, took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. And then he chopped wood for the fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, right? So there are three days into this. Abraham still in the rhythm of listening to God, of hearing for God. Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. And he's like, I know that. That's the place that God wants me to go to. That's where God's calling me to. Why? Because he was in the rhythm from hearing from God. He knew that was it. There it is. And so here's uh, what he does. It, or here's what we need to do. We need to make this commitment to take action when it doesn't make sense. You see, it didn't make sense for Abraham. How in the world, God, are you going to bless me? Um, and how in the world are you going to make many nations out of me and then be able to bless all these people? If, you, if I do what you're saying, but God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to take action. I'm just going to put one step in front of the other. And for three days out into that wilderness and until he got to that place. Finally, he comes to that place and he says, I'm just going to keep on taking the next step, trusting that God's going to do something. What is it that God has called you to do that didn't make sense? And you were like, I can't do that. Have you ever found yourself in that place? Have you ever found yourself that God was saying, hey, just speak a word to them? And you're like, no, that's too awkward. Several years ago, one of the um, you know, prime examples in my own life that stands out about that is I'm on this prayer walk, and I'm all done. I'm, I'm, I'm headed back to my car, and as I'm headed back to my car, uh, there's this couple laying over on the side, 
And you know, they're like into it, you know. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? So um, they must have been married. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I get to my car, but I, when I walk by them, I hear them. I, I mean, I hear in my, my head, just tell them I, that I love them, Rick. And I'm like, God, didn't you see them? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interrupting that. No, Rick, just go tell them that I love them. I'm like, I can't do that. They're going to think I'm weird. That's so awkward. I get in my car. And I'm still feeling that pressure. Just go tell them, Rick. I put my car in reverse. I back out of my parking lot, or out of my space. But I couldn't bring myself to leave the parking space. I put it in park. And I get back out. And I walk over there. And I walk up to them. And the first thing I said, this is going to sound so weird. And this is going to be so awkward. But I'm just going to tell you what I feel like I need to tell you. I just want you to know that God loves you. And I turned and I ran into my car. <laughs> Nothing like dramatic happened. It wasn't like, oh, that's a sign from God. And they didn't like, oh, I repent and I re, you know, receive God as my Savior. That didn't happen. But you know what did happen? I was able to get in my car and be like, God, it didn't make sense. But I did what well, you asked me to do. Because you know why? Because it wasn't that long before that incident happened that I didn't do it. And I drove by somebody that I knew that I was familiar with. And I saw them walking. And I felt that prompting. You need to go tell them that I love them. And I said, God, he's not going to listen to me. He's not, he, uh, I'm not going to do that. And I got all the way home. And then I couldn't park. I pulled back out of my driveway and went back down Main Avenue in Warwick trying to find this person. And I couldn't find him. And I thought, oh, I didn't act when you told me to. What if that was the word that they needed just at that time? It calls for a great commitment on your part and my part that we're just going to trust God even when it doesn't make sense and we're going to take action. Are you willing to do that? As a, if you're going to get away to get closer to God, this is what God calls us to do. The story goes on, and, and here's what Abraham says. He tells his servants, he says, stay here with the donkey. He says, the boy and I will travel a little farther up. And I love Abraham's faith here. Look at this. He says, we will worship. He's telling his servants, hey, we're going to go worship, and then we will come uh, right back. Don't you love why Abraham, I mean, Abraham knows he, because he has been through this before with God, and he knows that um, I, he's got, he has this faith that we're coming back. I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know how God's going to provide, but me and my son, we are coming back. And so Abraham placed the wood on the burnt, uh, uh, for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders. This is how we know he wasn't some young boy. You know how much wood it takes to actually have a sacrifice? It takes quite, it's not like one or two logs. It's a pile of wood. And so now we see uh, this teenage boy, maybe in his 20s, taking this pile of wood and he's got to hike up a mountain with it. He's no toddler. So up the mountain they go, and dad, Abraham, he carries what they're going to use for the fire, and he carries the knife. And it says, as the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to his dad. Just think about this. He turns to his dad. He's like, dad? He says, we have the fire and the wood but where's the sheep for the burnt offering? See, Isaac knew they were going to worship. Isaac knew that we were going to go up there and offer the sacrifice. But he's like, Dad, but where is the sheep? And look at Abraham's reply. Abraham's reply back to this is, God will provide a what? Read, read it. What's the scripture say? God will provide a what? A sheep. Not a boy. He says, God will provide a sheep. Did you see that? Those of you at home online, did you see that God says, or Abraham has this faith, that God is going to provide a sheep for the burnt offering? And they both walked on together. 
You see, what God is calling us to do, this, this biblical principle is this commitment to trusting that God will provide. Do you live your life like that? Do you live your life taking the action step, just the next step, not the leap, but do you just take the next step to get you to that place where you can just take the next step to get you to that place where you can just take the next step trusting that God is going to provide. Some of you, some of you maybe at home, you need to trust that God is going to provide the forgiveness that you need to offer. Some of you aren't trusting God for that and you're trying to do it in and of yourself. It's not going to come. You got to trust that God will provide. You got to trust that God's going to provide the grace. You got to trust that God's going to provide the mercy to respond. Some of you need to trust that God is going to provide for you emotionally. Some of you need to trust that God is going to provide for you physically. Some of you have a financial need. And you know what? It doesn't make sense to bring an offering. And to give it to God when you say, look at all this need here. That doesn't make sense. But that's an action step in the right way towards trusting, show, towards showing God. God, I believe that you will provide even when it doesn't make sense on, in the books. <laughs> but that you are trusting that God will be faithful. And that he will provide for you as you live a generous life. And that you give away to those in need. Do you live like that? Think about this. This is where Abraham is at. Abraham is there now. He's taken the wood. He spread it out. And then he looks at his son. And he's, you know he's waiting. God, where is it? Where's the sheep? He's looking all around. There's no sheep. He's not hearing any kind of noise. He's like, uh, he just takes the next step. He gets the rope. He's like, Isaac, Come here. Isaac, let me see your hands. He's just taking the next step. And there with Isaac's hands, Isaac's got to be looking at him like, Dad? Abraham's like, we're going to trust that God's going to provide as he wraps that rope around his wrists. In his mind, in his heart, he's saying God's going to provide. Probably telling his son, Isaac, I don't know. I just know that God's going to provide. God has provided for years for me and your mom. God has provided just the next step. And all I know to do right now when I don't know what to do is just take the next step. So give me your legs. And he wraps that rope around his legs. And he helps his son and lays his son down there on that wood. And he's like, God, I thought you're going to provide. God, aren't you going to provide? God, I told my servants, we are coming back. God, you've got to provide. And just at that moment, I mean, he's at the edge of the cliff, if you will. But at that very moment, look at verse number 11. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Because he's in the rhythm of hearing from God, yes, here I am. And he's probably thinking, and where is the lamb? <laughs> and God said, don't lay a hand on the boy. Because that was God's plan all, all along. This is about seeing the, the depth of the commitment from Abraham. He says, don't hurt him. In any way, for now <clears throat> I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. What is it that you're withholding from God? What is it that you won't let God? You're like, God, come and be the Lord over everything except this. I'm going to hold on to this. Because I know how to handle this better. I want to stay in control of this. See, what God is saying is, no, it's everything. If God is really going to be the Lord of your life, he's calling from everything. What are you holding back? 
Is it that person that you're supposed to forgive? Is it that person that you're supposed to extend grace and mercy to, which, by the way, is your neighbor, which is every person that you bump into? Are you holding back your finances from him because you think you can control it better, spend it better than God can? What is it that you're withholding from him? God's calling you to a great commitment that he will provide if you'll just take the next step. And then Abraham looked up, and there it was, God's provision, a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. And so he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place Yahweh Yaira. The Lord has provided. This had been true. This is true. And it will be true. Not just in Abraham's life, but in your life. God will provide. And it may always be, because it seems like it happens like this all the time. It's always at the last minute when you are stretched like that rubber band too until it's about ready to snap. But God will provide. You can trust him. You can count on it. And notice this, and to this day, the people still use that name as a proverb. On the, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. If you're in the rhythm of hearing from God, if you're in the rhythm of just taking the next action step to living like God has called you to live, if you're in that rhythm, and if you're in the rhythm of just saying, God's got this. God's going to provide whatever it is. Parents, I know that you're wrestling with this whole school, uh, school year. Like, what's this going to look like? I talked to a teacher uh, last night, and I loved his perspective. He's a high school teacher. And he said, he said, Rick, I'm just going to show up and be ready, whether it's in person, online, or half and half. I'm just going to show up. Why? He, he, he said, I'm just trusting God. Because God will provide whatever it is. And so for um, our next steps, here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm, say, I'm saying what you say. Hey, Rick, pray for me. I am committing to trust that God will provide. If you're in the room, the connection card's inside that bulletin. There's a blank there, and there's a blank for a reason. Because I'm wondering if you just want to tell us, I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm trusting that God will provide. And then you put in the specific thing. And then this week, as our team gathers, we will pray that God will provide that specific thing. If you are online, I, I encourage you. Uh, to text to this phone number, 401-496-9710. And just text the word pray. And when um, we, we want to pray for you, and when you get that immediate response back, uh, just follow that link and let us know how to pray for you and how that you, you are trusting that God will provide and for what? What is it that we can be praying for you in specific ways? Maybe uh, this morning you're listening. And maybe you have never trusted that God to provide your salvation. That's really your first next step. And that's why this one says, pray for me. I need to trust Jesus Christ to provide salvation for my life. Do you need that? Again, if you're online, here's what we're asking you uh, to do. We're just asking you to use that same phone number, 401 496 9710, and just text the word trust and follow those uh, prompts, and that will allow us to get in touch with you. And we would love to walk with you and show you from the Bible how you can come to the place where God provides your salvation. I want to pray for all of us. Jesus, thank you for those who have gathered online. Thank you for those who have gathered here in this room. And Father, we all find our place where we are in need. And we need you to provide, especially in this time. And there's so many things that are uncertain. 
But God, here's what we know that is for certain. That you hear our prayer. That you can be trusted. That you will lead us to take just our next step. And here's what we can count on. And that that is that you will provide. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, come and bring the encouragement where that is needed, that you're going to provide. And Father, where conviction is needed, we pray that you, Holy Spirit of God, would bring conviction where conviction is needed. But lead us all to whatever our next step is. And we pray this in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, there's no better person than to build our life on than Jesus Christ. And so if you're in the room, we remind you um, just why we sing. We're asking you to put back that mask on. If you're at home, will you just hear? Will you hear these words? Let them wash over you. If you want to sing out at home on your living room, then you sing out and you declare to God that he is worthy of building your life on. Please feel free to worship however you feel led this morning. If you'd like to stand and join us, we welcome you to do that as well.
never stop working You never stop, you never stop Sing it again Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop amazing that we serve a God that provides, that he is committed to us because he's for us. Man, we want to um, just extend an invitation that if you need prayer this morning, if you're here with us, we have people here who would love to pray with you. If you are at home watching, we would love for you to pray to the number that Rick mentioned earlier, 401-496-9710. And I just want to leave you with this word this morning. This comes from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 7. This is what Jeremiah says that he will provide for you. He says, I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return to me, not just with some of their heart, but with all of their heart, their whole heart. God gives that to us. He gives us the opportunity to have relationship with him for all of eternity, for every aspect, in, in every aspect of our life. But he asks us to bring our whole heart to him. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much for this word that Rick gave this morning. God, thank you for being a God who is committed to us, who provides for us. God, thank you for being you and for giving us what we need to be able to follow you. We love you and we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. Go in grace and peace today.